Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on an overview of candidal or yeast infections. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about some common yeast infections, including oral thrush, esophageal candidiasis, and some others, including vaginal yeast infections. And we're going to talk about some of the pathophysiology behind these conditions, some of the signs and symptoms that occur, how they're diagnosed, and how they're treated. So candidal infections are infections caused by fungi or yeast of the genus Candida. An infection with candida organisms causes candidiasis. Majority of cases of candidiasis is caused by the species candida albicans. There are other candida species, but this is by far the most common causative organism in these infections. Like many fungal infections, these yeast infections are often opportunistic infections. So in individuals who have issues with immune system functioning. What is the epidemiology of these infections? So I'm going to talk some brief points about patient characteristics and risk factors here. There's a higher prevalence in patients of extremes of age. And what I mean by that is individuals who are very young, so small children, and individuals who are very old, older adults or elderly patients. And this relates to immune system functioning. In younger patients, their immune system hasn't fully developed yet. So they're at more risk for getting these types of yeast infections. As patients get older, so elderly patients, their immune system starts to weaken, so they have issues with immune system functioning. These are the reasons why we see more candidal infections in extremes of age. And with regards to prevalence of candidal infections in general, there is no difference in prevalence between males and females. What are some risk factors of candidal infections? As I mentioned before, immunocompromise is by far one of the most important risk factors. Again, this is an opportunistic infection. It oftentimes occurs in patients with compromised immune system functioning. So you can think of patients with issues with immune system functioning. We mentioned some of them before, elderly patients, patients with chronic health conditions like diabetes can also have issues with their immune system functioning. You can think of other patient populations as well, including those with AIDS, so acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Individuals who are on chronic oral steroid use can also have issues with immune system functioning as well. So this is by far one of the major risk factors. And this ties in with another risk factor, including certain medication use. So as I just mentioned, steroid use, especially chronic oral steroids, can lead to decreased or depressed immune system functioning. And this also includes patients who use inhaled steroids, such as asthma patients. And we can also see it in some other immune system altering medications as well. So again, steroids is a big one. Trauma can also lead to localized issues with immune system functioning, increasing the risk of candidal infections in some areas. And then malnutrition, since overall health, including immune system functioning, requires proper nutrition, malnutrition can lead to issues with immune system functioning, leading to increased risk of infections, including candidal infections. Now let's talk about some of the pathogenesis behind a candidal infection or candidiasis. So candidal species are common flora present in the oral cavity, gastrointestinal tract, and on the skin. So they're present in the mouth, inside the gastrointestinal system, on the skin, and on other parts of the body, including the vagina. Now growth of the species is controlled oftentimes by a competent immune system. So oftentimes there are no problems with these species. They are controlled by the immune system. But as I mentioned here, they're controlled by a competent immune system. So that is the key word. If there is issues with the immune system, if there's a compromised immune system functioning, this can provide favorable conditions for candidal organisms to multiply. So dysfunctional host immunity or changes in flora, for instance, in the vaginal area. So if there's changes in the normal vaginal flora, this can also provide favorable conditions for candidal growth. And then we see overgrowth of candida. And candidal species most often flourish in moist environments. So you can think of the mouth. So let's talk about some different types of candidal infections. The first one I want to talk about here is oropharyngeal candidiasis. This is also known as oral candidiasis or oral thrush. Clinical features of this type of candidal infection include white plaques on the tongue, sore and painful tongue or sore and painful mouth. We can also see different types or different subtypes of oral pharyngeal candidiasis, including Issues with angular chelitis. So angular chelitis, you get these cracks on the side of the mouth. This may indicate that there is an oral pharyngeal candidal infection, especially we see this in older adults. And there can also be some dysphagia. If there is a significant infection, patients may have difficulty with swallowing. And some of the risk factors for oral pharyngeal candidiasis 
include immunocompromise, so that is a common risk factor for all candidal infections, but more specifically, oral steroids. And what I mean by that is any exposure of the mouth to steroids. So if there is inhaled steroids, for instance, in asthma or COPD, if that inhaled steroid gets in the mouth, gets on the tongue or into the throat, and it's not washed out if it's left there, this can lead to localized immunosuppression in that area, giving candidal species a chance to flourish. So this is a common reason why we can see this occurring. So if you are taking inhaled steroids, it's good to try to wash your mouth out, especially if you find that you do get a lot of those steroids inside your mouth. So if they sit there for a while, this can lead to issues with oral thrush or oral candidiasis. Now let's talk about esophageal candidiasis. So we're working our way down the gastrointestinal system. Oftentimes with individuals who have esophageal candidiasis, the oral mucosa, so inside their mouth, is often normal. At least half of patients have a normal oral mucosa. So you may find that they may have some oral pharyngeal candidiasis, and they may also have esophageal candidiasis, but it doesn't have to be this way. Clinical features of this condition include dysphagia, so issues with swallowing, that makes sense. Odynophagia, so painful swallowing. Epigastric pain is also another clinical feature, so pain in the epigastric area, so the area in the center of the abdomen above the belly button. Individuals with esophageal candidiasis can also have issues with retrosternal chest pain, so in some instances, this can be mistaken for a heart attack. So it's always important to rule out a heart attack, but this can present like a heart attack in some patients. And individuals can also have issues with nausea and vomiting as well. Another type of yeast infection or candidal infection is gastrointestinal candidiasis. So we can see this in patients with immunocompromise. Some of the clinical features here include fever and chills. This is a more significant candidal infection. We can also see issues with nausea and vomiting, epigastric pain, and abdominal pain. And there can also be a palpable abdominal mass as well in some cases. So this gastrointestinal candidiasis does have some features that are in common with esophageal candidiasis, but it also has a few others as well. Fever and chills, abdominal pain, and a possible abdominal mass. Now let's talk about candidal intertrigo. So this is a skin infection, and it occurs in areas where skin rubs on skin, the intertriginous areas. So these include the groin, the axilla or the armpits, the panis, so if there's a larger belly, if the belly rubs on the area underneath it, and then the inframammary area can also be affected, so under the breasts can be affected. And then if this occurs in males, the scrotum is often affected. And it usually appears as a moist area that's reddened, and there may be some skin breakdown. And then it can often feel like a burning sensation, and there can be pruritus, so an itching sensation, and there may be some discharge as well. Now let's talk about genitourinary candidiasis. So there's two I want to talk about here. The first one is vulvovaginal candidiasis, so a vaginal yeast infection. This presents with redness of the vagina or labia, itching and burning sensation, and a cottage cheese-like thick discharge that is white in coloration. So that is very key here with regards to vulvovaginal candidiasis. There can be some itching, and there's this white cottage cheese or thick discharge. And then if there is a speculum examination, the cervix is normal. And males can also get yeast infections as well. And in males, it's called penile candidiasis or candida belenitis. So belenitis is an inflammation of the penis. This is also known as male thrush or genital thrush. This is a less common condition. And it can present with an itchy rash and white colored patches on the penis. So if it's itchy, if there's white colored patches, this may indicate that it is a penile candidiasis or candida belenitis. Now let's briefly talk about how clinicians diagnose and treat these conditions. So diagnosis is oftentimes performed by potassium hydroxide or KOH prep. So there's scrapings of the skin or some smear and there's a KOH prep and they look to see if they can see fungal cells. A urinalysis can also be performed if it's a genitourinary candidiasis and then a urine culture can also be helpful. And then in patients with esophageal candidiasis, endoscopy with or without biopsy can also be helpful for diagnosis. Treatment depends on the type of candidal infection, oral pharyngeal candidiasis, either topical or oral antifungals. So with regards to topical, there can be nystatin swish and spit or nystatin swish and swallow, and fluconazole 
in cases of severe infections. Esophageal candidiasis is often treated with systemic antifungal therapy. So oral antifungals like fluconazole can be used here. Gastrointestinal candidiasis is treated with oral antifungals, again, fluconazole. Candidal intertrigo. So with regards to candidal intertrigo, it's important to keep areas clean and dry for prevention. And topical antifungals are often used to treat this, including clotrimazole or ketoconazole. And genitourinary candidiasis is usually treated with topical so we can think of clotrimazole or canestin or oral antifungals as well. So that was a very brief overview of diagnosis and treatment of these conditions. If you want more information, please check out my lessons on these topics. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.